Hello, good morning. Can you guys hear me? All right, we are live. Hey, comics legend. See you here. All right, chat working, video working, audio working. Excellent. All right. We are going to get started in just a second. Setting up my references. Chat, all good, alrighty. Cool. So let's hope that the drivers don't crash <laughs> on me today. Um, I did, I did an update again. Um, well, I've been trying to update the driver since the last time that uh, everything just went high wire but um, yeah looks like it's it's better now uh, but if we have any issues I'm just gonna restart and and I'll be back soon all right so I'm just gonna continue with this skull if you guys have questions about the process of course uh, feel free to ask um, yeah that we're gonna just keep doing the same thing that we did last time as in uh, progressing on the sculpting part um, or, the, or the sculpting stage and then um, I'm hopefully we're going to get to probably merge some of these things together and use Dynamesh, maybe Sculptures Pro uh, and keep refining this this creature. Um, originally I was intending to create an actual creature out of it but I don't know maybe maybe I will just stick with uh, just creating a skull uh, of the creature like a still like a creature amateur or a creature, um, creature skull but just as a, as a skull like something that uh, could be like a fossil or something that could be presented in a in a in a glass orb or something like that um, I think that might be more interesting uh, but yeah that's that's the plan for today all right so um, two things that I did prior to to start the stream um, to starting the stream uh, actually after we finished the last stream um, I generated this this cam view so the top right corner is basically a version of this skull that I just poly painted with the different uh, sub tools or different groups and so it, I just have it there as a, as a reference of the of the pieces that I'm building and what was the other thing uh, I yeah I upgraded the resolution of some of this these pieces and I use polish to um, sort of like simplify and, and polish yeah some of the the surfaces here so um, yeah let's go ahead and start adding a few more pieces I think um, that's what I wanted to do first and for that I'm gonna use the tool that we had last time which was a macro uh, what was the name skull pieces I'm just gonna put it there. All right, so that's the macro that we did last time, which essentially uh, extract and dynamesh a piece that we select based on the on the masking. And yeah, that's what I'm going to start doing here. And the, the idea is that um, I'm gonna end up with a with a bunch of separate pieces. Some of them might still separate, might, might keep separate, and some of them I will merge together. So with that mask selected, let's click skull pieces. Um, hmm. There's something in the macro that is different from the last time. <laughs> Wonder what that is. Ah, oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe, yeah, there's something different. So we'll have to check that out, but for now it's all right. I'm gonna increase that resolution a little bit and use the Accu curve with the move brush. So with that we can sort of like integrate this a bit better. And then we're gonna spend a bit of time um, just working on this, um, on this part of the process of integrating all of these pieces a little bit better so they feel part of the same and just uh, uh, like a kit bash <laughs> of pieces all 
All right. Um, hey Berg, how you doing? Comics legend, any update regarding when you will release your highly anticipated comics? Uh, um, yeah, it's out. I sent an email this morning. So it's out. Let me just bring that up before we continue so that you guys know uh, what Comics Legend is referring to. I actually had it open here. Um, yeah, it's it's ready to go. So if you go to the Sirush, uh, sorry, to the 3D Concept Artist, if you go to Sirush Guides as well, it will be there. Um, yeah, so just go to the 3D Concept Artist website or Sirush Guides. Um, both will be pointing to the to the right place. Um, yeah, so you just go to click on uh, go to the website, click on check check it out that um, button, and you can see a little bit of a of a walkthrough video that I do over the entire process. And yeah, you can just check it out. Everything is in here. Um, there's uh, some frequently asked questions about what software do you need, how many hours of content, that sort of thing. So everything is covered in the website. Just um, yeah, just have a look at it. And if you go to the Sirush Guides website, there should be, again, a link here that will send you to the same place. So either or is fine. Uh, I sent an email, so if you didn't get it or you're not subscribed, that's the reason why. If you subscribe and didn't get it, probably check the, um, the spam folder. But it's, yeah, it's out there. So it's, hopefully it's going to be pretty fun. Um, I'll tell you more about it later on if we have time or if you guys want and if you want me to answer some questions. But yeah. It is there. All right, I'm just thinking which other areas I could sort of use to extract um, a few pieces. I think in terms of the main ones, they're fine. And Sorry about if you sorry about the noise. Um, sometimes uh, it's just hard it's just hard to live in, a, in an apartment. <laughs> but um, we have some very noisy neighbors, and they there's a, it's a complete disregard for the for the other occupants of the of the building. So uh, they're pretty noisy. Trying to deal with it in the best way I can, but. Sometimes he gets on my nerves, <laughs> and right now they are being very noisy. Alrighty, I think I'm gonna use this one as well to just extract this piece here. Let's try the skull pieces again. So yeah, it worked in this case. I think in the previous one it was just too thin, and something happened there. And all of these pieces, they might not be, like I might not leave those at the end. Um, it's just, um, it's a good way to just keep those uh, as a as a way to add the volumes or to, to keep, um, how would I put this, to, to have them as reference of the volumes that you want to use. And, you know, that's the reason I also have that, um, that piece here. Although, obviously, it doesn't get updated in real time with the, with the new pieces that I add, I sort of have an idea of um, as a as a way of looking at a thumbnail where to put like new volumes and which parts um, I think could be could be useful. All right, so if I just turn this on and off. You'll see it just adds a, adds a, a bit of a volume and, and changes slightly the the silhouette. So that's the type of things that I'm sort of trying to figure out right now. Um, 
I guess I could just like push them with the, let's say, if I want to refine this line here. So I don't want a, a very straight line, you know, so 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 straight in, in a way. Uh, I want something a little bit more rounded here, for example, and maybe, um, you know, compensate with this other one. Uh, that sort of thing is probably just easier if I just select the the subtool that I already created or the, the mesh and, and play around with the with the volumes like this. But I could just simply use another piece. And like I said, the reason I'm doing all of these pieces as well is so that uh, once we get to, let's say, dynamic everything together, if we're going to do that, um, it sort of keeps those very sharp changes in the volume. And once we start uh, smoothing this out, you'll see uh, it's gonna be pretty, pretty clear the reason <laughs> maybe right now it feels like uh, you could have just been you know you can just achieve the same thing uh, with a single mesh and the damn standard brush for example let's do another piece there a bit more resolution straight away and let's go ahead and push this in so this one is gonna be pretty subtle I think I'm gonna I'm gonna push it in. Ah, uh, there we go. So that's um, <laughs> that's uh, hopefully it's not a bad thing. Let me check. No, I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be okay. Um, let me give me one second. I'm gonna restart here. All right, wasn't that bad. I'm actually gonna leave the chat on and turn off the thumbnail. All right, it wasn't that bad, but I lost the cam view. And I don't know where I put it. So what I was saying is that this piece is gonna be pretty subtle. It's almost gonna have the, uh, the same sort of volume as the the centerpiece here on the forehead, um, almost the same, the same curvature, if you will. Uh, but this difference, this is what I'm looking for, exactly. Like this, um, this sort of line that is created between this piece and the other one. Um, although they are sort of creating the same sort of main shape or primary shape, that difference, that line, is what I'm going to um, be able to capitalize on when I merge all of these things and and you know refine it with the with the smooth brush so that's the the sort of things I'm trying to achieve with the with the extra pieces uh, so for instance let's say say if we do the same thing here maybe with a smaller smaller brush size and then just mask a tiny little bit like this um, oh we have to Place this here again. Macros. No, not that one. Hmm. What happened with the? <laughs> I lost it. Here we go. Skull pieces. All right, I'm gonna smooth this one out. Increase the dynamics resolution and I'm just gonna start pushing these ones in. So again, the same deal with this. I'm just trying to um, come up with a with a flow for all of these details. Although they're not really details, just uh, 
sort of like refining the primary shapes a bit. Um, but as we do that, we are gener generating some idea of what the secondary shapes might be. And that's what those lines are for, really. Hopefully, all of that makes sense. All right. I think we're getting there. I don't know if it is easy to see with this material is um, works for me, but I don't know if it might be too too dark for you guys. Uh, let me know. I'm going to use the inflate brush and I'm going to accentuate some of these volumes a bit. Um, I think I sort of lost a few uh, a few interesting volumes when I did the, the polish, but that's very easy to recover. Um, this center part, the center part of the, the skull is something that I'm not entirely happy with. So I might just, let's use the inflate brush. Uh, this could be an area that I can you know, just work on once we combine everything together. But just using the, the inflate brush just to add more volume and then we can remove it. It's always easy to remove or yeah, to sort of like uh, clip or uh, delete pieces than, than adding in this type of workflow when it's not a solid piece at least, I think. Might be wrong. But yeah, I feel like I need um I need an extra piece here to define the this part of the of the nose. Um I don't know if this is working the way that I wanted it to work or not not entirely happy with this one so we probably can work on that um, so let's go into solo mode that's a small piece uh, let's try this one so I'm gonna mask this area create a piece there all right and with the move brush and the Aki curve I'm gonna try to um, refine this just looking at the reference and see if there's some, anything that can suggest uh, a good volume a good shape here I think it's mostly this uh, like the the top area like the bridge of the nose what what I'm sort of missing I think let's have a look yeah yeah I think it's most mostly that so let's push all of these in and let's go ahead and integrate this a bit more with the top volume or this sort of forehead Now another thing that you could use when you're doing this process of integrating these shapes is to use the damp standard brush with the inverter effect. So let's say around this area, I just mark it like this, right? And it sort of suggests uh, a bit of, like I said, trying to establish a bit of a flow between the different um, volumes and different subtools that you're creating. I'm going to use the clay brush just to push this a bit more. And I'm going to use a different technique 
just now uh, just for the sake of showing you something different and then hopefully we're gonna start working a little bit more on the on the sculpting side of things I think that's starting to look a bit more interesting. It's starting to feel a bit more solid, but you know, it's made out of a of a bunch of pieces. Um, this might need a bit of work as well. something going on here. I don't know if it's from the same piece. No. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and use uh, a different technique. Let me see the chat. Uh, greetings from Ghana. Ofori. How you doing, man? Comics legend. Ah, oh, cool. Um, 5130. Hey, Alex. <laughs> How you doing? Perfect. Alrighty, um, so the other thing that we can work on, um, let's do a quick save, uh, following the same principle of just adding a bunch of uh, of these pieces, as you can see there are plenty, um, would be to use the clay tubes. So I'm going to use the, where is it, not multi-tool, this one, curved tubes, uh, using, you know, any any other tool as a, or any other um existing piece as a as a base to draw it so right now I have the main sort of part of the skull selected so I can start doing these things and it will just be automatically masked out so let's undo that that wasn't what I was trying to do definitely with a smaller brush size and so right now this is what I'm getting right um, so it's not necessarily following the contours of the of the volume. So that is because in the picker here at the top, if you go to depth, um, right now it is set to, by default, that brush is set to 1C, which means that it will preserve the, the depth of the first point that you clicked on. So if you click on constant Z um, or continuous Z, Sirius is going to evaluate the surface every time or as, as you draw the stroke. So uh, you'll see the difference straight away. So that it is now sticking to the surface, right? Now there's a couple more things that I want to add or change with this brush. Uh, right now it is sort of, let's say, from this angle. So the tube is like this, right? And the surface that I'm using to sort of draw this, uh, as I said, Cirrus is now, since we changed the, the picker, is evaluating the surface every time as we as we draw. So the surface roughly at this angle is here. So that means that it is like say 50% embedded. So 50% of that of that stroke is embedded into the surface. Now we can change that if we want to. I think it's fine, but that can be done from here. So for you guys would be under the brush palette depth. So the same thing, same icon that I have in my UI. And what that means is that if you push this one like so, right, that center point is equivalent to, uh, let's use the same color. Actually, let me just repeat that so that is more clear. Yeah. Um, so the size of the tube or the volume of whatever insert brush you're using or what whatever brush is equivalent to this area in the thumbnail. Um, this would be the embedded part. This line in the middle would be the equivalent to the surface. And that point is kind of like the center point of that, um, that brush. 
Um, so if I push this one in like so and then just click to update, you'll see that it gets embedded into the skull a bit more. Um, so anyway, we can just sort of tweak this as much as much as we want to and then you know keep clicking on the curve to update it. So that's um, that's one way to do it. The other thing I want to change is um, I want to make the curve sort of like taper towards the end and towards the bottom so that by default as I draw it, it sort of feels like integrates and, and blends a little bit more into the, the surface. So for that, I'm going to go to the stroke palette, not this side. And I'm going to click on size. Let me just hide a few things. There we go. So I'm going to click on size. Right now, uh, as soon as I activate the size, then Siri is going to look at this curve falloff, so this profile. So if I update it just by clicking on the curve, you see it is start. Well, it starts here where we click the first time. So this point right here is the uh, the starting point or the root, and this point here is the end or the tip, right? Um, so that, that means that if we activate the size, uh, what Sirius is looking at is this profile curve. And this profile curve in Sirius, you read like from left to right, you read the uh, root first and then the tip or the end. So meaning this point right here is the start. And this point right here is the end. And obviously that'll be the curve. So it obviously makes sense. Um, this point being very, very low here in this profile means the, the size is gonna be pretty small, like it, we have here, and vice versa. This point is pretty high in the in the profile, meaning that at this point is 100% um, the size of your brush, basically. So all I wanna do is make sure that both are a little bit more consistent, so not entirely set to zero, um, but roughly like this. And then you can click on the curve to add a new point, right? And if you click the actual, um, that little circle that appears around the point, that's kind of like the follow of the of the actual point that you added to the curve. So you can click on that and expand that, right? So if I click now on the curve, it gets, whoops, gets updated, right? So you see the beginning is slightly, well, it's smaller. Uh, it goes to the middle of the curve, which, which it gets to almost almost 100%, let's say 90% of the size of the brush. And then it falls again back to um, the size of almost the same as the, as the beginning. So that's roughly what I wanna get um, to integrate a little bit more. You can fine tune it and maybe, you can add maybe two points if you wanna I know something a bit thicker in the middle, for example. Um, I think it's fine as it is, but let's just tweak it for the sake of it. Right? Um, so one more thing I wanna update about this curve is the, the curve itself within the stroke palette. Um, I might wanna just lock the start and the end, maybe. So I'm gonna click lock, start, and lock end. And that way I can manipulate the rest of the curve without changing the the points that I started with. So that's something that I could do. All right. I'm gonna undo all of this that I just did. Uh, don't worry, if you undo what you did um, with the stroke, Siri's gonna go back to what you had before, as in what the, uh, it's gonna undo. It's gonna go back in the undo history on the on the mesh, but all the settings will stay or will remain the same. So if I draw again, I still have all my settings that we just tweaked. That's why. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I guess I have to do it a little bit slower. Right, so I have that line. Maybe I'm gonna reduce the brush size and click again. 
and obviously as I change my brush size and click on the curve Sirius updates the size and then remember that we have the the start and the end locked so I can just start pushing these pieces or you know tweaking the the position of the curve like so and of course this is going to give me a lot more room to play with the with the um, details later on so happy with that um, what I'm going to do now actually is remember that I started with the with the, with the main part of the skull as my starting point as uh, to draw the curve um, on and as soon as you draw a core a curve the, the rest gets masked so I'm gonna split on mask points and now uh, let's go to the new tool so now I have the curve in a separate mesh or a separate sub tool sorry and now I can just keep drawing the curves using that as my reference point so I don't I don't mix it or, or merge it with the um, with the original skull so I'm gonna do a few of these and if you guys have questions about all of that or this process feel free to ask um, another cool trick is if you click on the brush sorry on the curve that you have active and then you hold shift it just you can smooth the curve like I just did there so I'm just clicking and pressing uh, shift to smooth that So this is, um, I would say, it's, it's exactly the same process that we've been uh, doing with the other pieces. It's just obviously slightly different. Uh, it creates some, you know, smaller details. Um, but you can also use the, you can change the size of your brush to make uh, larger pieces. So for example, if I go like that, you know, I could have done those pieces uh, just with a larger size and and have the chance to sort of like slide that volume but I think that does too much All right, just gonna do more details here at the top. And this also kind of like help to integrate certain areas. Let's say if I start from here and then I go from one sub tool into the next one, like I just did there. Again, trying to establish a, a flow. I'm gonna reduce the brush size quite a bit. So it just helps to integrate those pieces in certain areas. So they feel part of the of the same skull. And keep in mind that this is just uh, the initial stage of this of this process. You can definitely uh, do do things like dynamesh those um, those lines, those curves first. Um, I'll I'll do that in, in just a little bit. But you can inflate ear areas. You can just pull all the stuff with um, other sections with the move brush and the Aki curve. Uh, and that sort of thing because right now they just feel like like worms <laughs> or like um, yeah <laughs> like tub tubular pieces which is what the brush is all about but um, that's the type of thing that I'm gonna pay attention to in a second uh, you can also extend the curve right so if you hover over the end of the curve you'll see that red line that appears So this line here, the red line. Um, so as, you, as soon as you sort of hover over that area and you see that red line appear, that means Sirius is going to connect the last point of the curve to the center point of your uh, brush and you can keep dragging. I'll give you an example of that. So I'm gonna hover over and get to the end and I'll see the red line there appear. And when, I, when it appears, then I just click and keep going and that sort of extends the, the curve. So that's a pretty useful thing.
So what I'm looking at here, um, other than just adding those, I would say details, but <laughs> secondary volumes, uh, what I'm looking at right now is to both two things. One is integrate some of the pieces a little bit. And two is try to establish that sort of flow of the of the volumes. All right. Uh, this one could be a bit smaller. So uh, you can play around obviously changing the, the brush size. And all of these brushes, oh, sorry, all of these strokes or tubular shapes are being well, created in the same sort of subtool. So once I, uh, I could dynamish all of them together and it will feel even more um, integrated in a way. But I think I'm gonna do that with, you know, everything at once. Uh, let's see the chat, actually. Haven't seen that for a while. Hey, Dr. Pixel Saruba. <laughs> Um, I can find the AI curve in the UI. Um, Nayan, so that is under the curve palette in your brush palette. So if you go to the brush, go to the curve, and it's this one here, AI curve. Can you move the curve using transpose or gizmo? Yes, you can. Not when the when you're drawing the curve. But once it's a mesh like I have right now, you can do anything with it like on any other mesh. Hey Sebastian from Chile, how's it going? So I guess you can replace the tubes from the curve tube for another primitive form, right? Absolutely, this is just the simplest form. And again, I'm not trying to add any specific detail right now. Uh, all I'm doing is, you know, establishing other volumes, but you can totally do that with any other brush. Um, you know, you can create straps, whatever you want, <laughs> really. But in this case, the simplest form, the sim the, the simplest, the, the better, because it, I'm just using it to, to add volumes and kind of like to sculpt um, pieces. So that's what I'm just doing it with the with the curve brush. But you could do it with anything else, with a with a cube, maybe. Sometimes I use I use a cube just because it gives me sharper edges. And it's, you know, it's a pretty cool way to do that. The certain areas that I'm going to try to I'm gonna try to access this and then I'm gonna use the, the red line to extend the curve like I just showed you. So I do that one first and then rotate the camera and sort of like extend it like so. And it doesn't have to be, you know, long lines or, or tubes like this. Uh, it could, you know, be little pieces like this, you know. That's that's totally fine. I mean, it really depends on the design and, and what you're trying to achieve here. But I think I'm going to continue with the, the original idea of, you know, extending these lines quite a bit. Maybe this one could be a bit thicker. Whoops, that's too much. I'm going to play with the brush size here and create maybe something a bit more interesting. I 
maybe I know this is you know it could be a, a boring thing to watch um, it's very repetitive but I think it'll pay off and some of these sort of like swirly details is something that um, like this yeah this specific pattern uh, it just sort of like takes it away from that more organic realistic sort of thing that we're trying to create but um, I think it's something that we can uh, work on it won't look like this once we start adding like you know clay brushes and, and stuff it won't necessarily look like that remember what I'm trying to do um, just repeating myself but what I'm trying to do uh, at the moment is uh, refine those volumes and you know play with the it's kind of like creasing certain areas and integrating so that is part of the deal and just like that even if we haven't started adding details uh, I'm sure you can you can agree that this looks a bit more detailed than what we started with and I'll show you the difference it's pretty obvious so shift shift s right so the one on the left is the one that has all the details that we've added with the tubes and I just hide just hit the uh, the tubes on the on the one on the right so it definitely adds more visual interest and but it, but that's why I keep on saying that it, it's important to establish a flow or like think about the flow the shapes uh, so that it just doesn't become you know noise for the sake of adding details uh, and I didn't add it in all the areas as well so you know I'm trying to keep I keep I try to keep certain areas um, you know with less details like this and sort of big chunks um, of the of the overall volumes and the and the mesh uh, that have less um, less visual weight so that um, they feel you know is is that that sort of thing of um, you have to balance the amount of details with or the the areas of details with the areas of rest for the for the eyes to rest uh, but it's also to create a bit of a, um, a hierarchy in the details in a way so it's starting from the top down um, I don't know if this is gonna make any sense but I'm just trying to to give you an idea of what goes into into this design process in my mind when I'm doing it but I don't necessarily say it um, so if you it's almost like a like a radial gradient so if you start I'm gonna do it like this uh, so if you start as a, if you think about it as a radial gradient let's say the the most amount of details would might or might be here where the where the teeth are and where all of these pieces are so like um, converging and all those lines are sort of like pointing towards uh, and as soon as you yeah like a radial gradient you go out towards the outside of the of the skull you know there's less details around here and more details uh, it doesn't have to be detailed it could be just like the the actual visual weight it could be done with textures or, or you know these volumes that we are adding so it doesn't have to be details um, but that is roughly the idea and the other thing that I keep going on about is the the flow of the shape so this is pretty pretty little literal the the lines that we are in the tubes because they they help very like it's very easy to to sort of follow them um, so what I'm trying to do is also using them as as ways to uh, direct you know the, the the viewers eyes to towards the center part which is where the um, the eyes or the the details are located I don't know if that makes sense but just wanted to uh, give you a hint of what I what's the what's the reason of adding those pieces and and why I'm adding them I'm just gonna add a few more here that I think could work nicely and I just realized 
I just realized I, I dynamished this at some point. <laughs> I don't know when, um, but it kind of works. <laughs> so you'll see all of these are, are merged together. That is what I wanted to do later with everything, but it eh, doesn't matter. Let's undo that. Yeah. So this is how it is right now with all the, like, you know, what we had before. And I dynamish and everything gets sort of a bit more integrated. These pieces right here and here. And that's what I'm going, I'm, that's what I'm trying to achieve later um, when we mer merge everything together. So I'm going to undo that and then just add a few more, a few more lines. I think I'm gonna spend a bit of time here in the the jaw because it's, it's an area that I've been sort of neglecting. Again, not too much details. It's just it's just refining the volumes with twos. <laughs> I guess that's the you know, like the, that's the summary of what I'm doing. Just refining volumes with tubes and with tiny little lines because um, this is not gonna necessarily look like this. It's gonna be a, a lot more integrated, uh, and then we're gonna add you know details on top of that. So. It's it's almost like um, so. Some of the some of the extra milers that are here would recognize this step of uh, marking the marking the sketch, marking the um, the sculpt with the dam standard brush. So uh, this is something that I teach in the in the course and it's part of the workflow. But it's essentially with the dam standard brush, use using that tool just to cut through the model and and mark the areas that you wanna add volumes to. This is similar um, you will just add these pieces to to mark where the areas are and this is what I did just here for example this piece uh, so we had that piece in there as a as a starting point as a as a first volume and then with this line I sort of marked that area to uh, to add to add volume to the to the border but also to sharpen that that line in the you know towards the outside of this shape. So that's uh, another another reason I'm doing this. I'm gonna start maybe here. Uh, another cool thing that I'm just gonna show you. Oops. You can keep the, the brush size relatively small when you're working and adding these pieces. And if you wanna add more variation, let's say, um, let's say there, uh, I'm just gonna do it like this. Uh, let's say I wanna add more volume here. Remember, as soon as you lock in that new shape by just clicking somewhere else, uh, the rest of the shapes will be uh, masked. So you can just take your inflate brush and then go over it and simplify it or just sorry add more volume or use the smooth brush to simplify it right so I, it, I could just refine the thickness over here and then use the smooth brush and make a thinner detail around there you can also use the move brush right uh, for example the move brush with AccuCurve smaller brush size and just refine the the overall shape of this to integrate it more. Like I said, it's not necessarily a detail, it's just um, 
refining volumes. Uh, I'm not sure if I dynamish that. No. Okay. It's all good. Um, cool. Just looking at it from different angles. Um, I, th I still think the, the nose needs some work. Um, and I'm not sure. Let's just add a few lines here. So what I'm trying to do here is um, trying to get these two curves um, close to each other towards the center and then they will have separate you know geometry so I can pull them apart a little bit with the move brush. I'll show you what I mean. So something like that. So now I just accept that, that piece and then I can take the move brush. Play around with that, um, and I want to just extend this like so. There we go. So I think that would work. Um, we can refine the, the silhouette a bit more with the Accu Curve and the Move Brush once we dynamish this. But I think it's fine. All right, starting to, to shape nicely. Cool, so let's do a quick save. Let's see if there's any questions in the chat. Uh, Kung Fu Pixels, <laughs> never boring. Gray, Gray from Sydney. Hope you're staying safe. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting a little bit crazy here in Melbourne, but um, I mean, a self self imposed lockdown just to be safe. Fortunately, um, what I do, I can do it all from home, so it's not a um, it's not a change in the pace for me. Uh, Comics legend uh, Paulo, what motivates you to keep creating amazing work? Um, I don't know. I just have some. I just have lots of ideas, and every time that I just read something, or uh, I don't know, there's there's different things that motivate me. To to be honest, I think it's mostly the the challenge of doing something knew that um, that I haven't tried or you know uh, I, I sometimes just fall back to you know what I feel more comfortable with but uh, it really motivates me to uh, try new things and for example if I try something that is completely new then I can and, and I learn something from it even if it's a failure I can take that and or the whatever I learn in in that sort of like self-imposed challenge and apply it to something that I know or um, you know refine something that I feel more comfortable with so to give you a practical example um, my I think the my strength in design would be on characters uh, but I also like to do props and you know um, environments concept more abstract stuff uh, so yeah, I, I also like to do it, to do that. So I, if I find something or have an idea to do something interesting or find a new feature, a new uh, software that um, probably allows me to do that, to work on different areas or different themes, topics, objects, whatever it is, um, it just motivates me to to try them and then 
I can try them. Like I said, it could be a failure. It could be, uh, you know, I could learn something very specific out of it. And then I can use that that experience and I apply it to something that I feel more comfortable with, right? Um, like creating characters. So that sort of thing. So this could be, you know, like I could have learned this, uh, this technique or this, uh, this process of the cu uh, curved tube brush, uh, working on um, trying to make a, I don't know, a tree, like the roots of a tree, right? Um, and it might not be a great looking piece or, or anything like that, but I learned that that is a cool thing that I can in integrate in the workflow of something that I feel more comfortable uh, and that I like doing more, which are, you know, characters and creatures and that sort of thing. So yeah, every, anything, anything could be a, a catalyst, I guess. I listen to a lot of um, suggestive music. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if it is suggestive, it's just for me it is. So um, yeah, so music and sometimes old, old pieces of music that um, the very, you know, the, the lyrics and, and, and the actual melody is very suggestive. So it sort of like transpo transports me to, you know, an imaginary area where I can uh, see myself uh, or see creatures, you know, or um, have a, I don't know, some kind of like emotional response to it. And, and that is, again, another catalyst or another way that um, that sort of motivates me to produce more stuff or try something new. Hopefully that answers a little bit that question. It's like um, just talking a little bit more on um, on that topic. Um, what I did for the series for illustrators course um, it's something that I really like like I really enjoy doing comics and that sort of style it, it really it's something that really um, sort of like resonates with me that the style and uh, sometimes this the simplicity of the idea uh, or sometimes like the complexity of the idea represented in a more simplest like the most simplest way um, I don't know it really resonates with me so but it's not something that I do all the time right so it, it, that's another space or another area that I can spend a lot of mo a lot more time working or working with um, than you know that if I were to do just uh, another character. All right. So here, I'm, what I'm going to do is show you another technique. Hopefully, it works, um, which is similar to what I've been doing, but to subtract volumes. I don't know if it's. I haven't used it for a while, but Hopefully it's still relevant. Uh, so I'm going to use the the same technique, uh, let's say here, around here. Around the eye. So I just, uh, so by the way, selected the, the skull and I added this curve. Um, but now what I'll do is I'm going to hold the Alt key once and I, I'm going to click on the tube. So that basically flips the normal of the of the tube. So you'll see it looks a little bit weird. If I turn on double, it's just going to look normal. But I prefer to leave the double off so that you can see the tube or like the inverter or the flip normals of the tube, right? Um, Obviously, this is not going to add volume, but if I, you know, click outside, we have now uh, sort of like two competing meshes. So I have the original mesh of this call that has, uh, I mean, I'm going to explain this a little bit because it is, it is rather important. I'm going to turn off my cam view. Uh, it's important to, to understand the, the idea of what I'm going to show you. So um, the skull, let's say, has these polygons like this and the normals are pointing outwards of those polygons, right? 
the tube that I just draw and it's a it's a large volume uh, so let's do it here the normals of these one are pointing inwards because I hold the old the yeah I clicked on the or hold the alt key um, or held the alt key and click on the curve to update it so it updated the normals right so now the normals are sort of pointing inwards that's why you can see it flipped right um, but I did that within the same subtool so now we have two so sort of like set of normals or um, competing normals it's not it's not a big deal right especially we're gonna dynamics and all that um, later on but I did that intentionally so that I when I remove the mask so click control and drag right now we have an unmasked piece and I can hold control click and drag and redynamish and as I redynamish Siri is going to take that last piece that we added as a subtraction or as a inverted normal uh, and I, it's going to remove that piece so it is essentially the same thing that I just did with the tubes but instead of just adding pieces I'm going to take that um, I'm just removing them from the dynamics kind of like carving them in so you get these very nice and you know sharp areas here and then we can obviously smooth that out and that allows you to produce again not details but start refining those volumes a lot more and you can see that that the effect of that so I'm gonna do it again just to repeat the, the process hopefully that um, it's a bit clearer um, it's kind of like an advanced technique I guess just in the sense of that you sort of need to know certain things um, to understand a bit of how it works but it's not complicated at all so first like step one is to choose the the mesh that you want to edit or subtract pieces from in this case the the main part of the skull and I'm just refining the the eyes right and all right and once you're happy with what the volume looks like you you have to also think about uh, how it would look if you get rid of that so um, think about the negative space in a way of how this volume would <laughs> you know subtract that piece um, once you're happy with that let's click somewhere else to accept that so now we have whoops before I do that actually before you accept you hit, you have to click alt and click on the curve and that updates the curve uh, normals sort of like if we you can start doing that from the beginning you can just hold the alt key and and drag right but you won't be able to see it as easier so that's the reason I just click once to update the normals then click outside remove the mask and then redynamish and now we remove that bit All right, so that's starting to to look alright. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe add one more here, smaller brush size. And here's where you can start uh, with this technique. It's a bit more obvious. Uh, you can start playing with uh, the insertion of that mesh. So remember that thumbnail that I showed you before. You can just push it forward so that it's not as strong the embedding effect maybe less than that so I'm just clicking on that thumbnail and updating that mesh and now I can go ahead and hold the alt key to update click somewhere else control click and drag and redyna mesh so now we have uh, you see it's not as as, ex as strong that mesh or that um, that effect as the, the other ones just because I changed the, the depth of the of the curve and of course you can combine these later on uh, with other with other things so I'm gonna change the the depth right I'm gonna reduce the brush size right and you can do the same thing without um, without flipping the normals 
sort of like instead of subtracting you can just add and that's what I'm doing or what I've been doing with the other pieces so I'm gonna click outside Dynamesh All right so these are literally two different pieces and I can read Dynamesh and now obviously this is a, an added volume And again, this is just the starting point to to work on something better. I'm um, just gonna add a few more here. All right, I think we're getting closer to a dynamesh point. But before that, I think I'm gonna utilize this technique as well to quickly add some volumes following the, the placement of the teeth here at the bottom. And this looks, looks pretty heavy in terms of detailing, but I'll show you another technique that uh, works really well with this workflow. And also the reason why I, you know, just to give you another reason why you would use this instead of, uh, you know, for example, the the usual standard brush to add this type of details or, or inflate brush. So this is this is kind of like a almost like sculpting weed, not necessarily molding or um, sculpting pieces, but rather like adding pieces of clay in a way <laughs> and then we're gonna dynamish all right so i'm gonna clear that mask so obviously this looks a little bit too too much um i don't i don't mind it but i just need to make sure that this sort of like flows a little bit better into the mesh underneath uh, so for that you can use the uh, move topological with accucurve so if i go into poly uh polyframe or poly paint no polygroups <laughs> Uh, you see all of them they have the different polygroup and because obviously they are uh, actually different curves or different meshes they don't have any continuity so I can take that topology brush that would respect that continuity and I just pull this like so so it allows you to refine this very quickly just clicking on the mesh that you wanna um, that you wanna tweak And of course, if you want to increase, let's say the um, the thickness, the thickness here at the top, right? Uh, it's just a matter of using the inflate brush, and we just combine it with the with the standard with the yeah the standard smooth brush. So all of these pieces just to add more volume here towards the like as it gets closer to the teeth. Right. Uh, I think the top one, the top area, might need as well. Let's give him give it some love to that area as well quickly and how we doing with time I reckon today we're just gonna be able to set everything you know uh, fin finalize the secondary details pass in a way and then we start with details next time I need to think about how to mesh this a little bit better. These two pieces here. So let's do that.
All right, I'm gonna use the move brush, the move topological with AccuCurve, and I'm just gonna start, you know, doing the same thing, <laughs> just um, repetitive but necessary. And this is the reason why it's so important to have the uh, so sort of like being happy with the the overall shape and the overall uh, silhouette before you start adding all those things because uh, then it becomes a bit more complicated. You can still use the same technique I showed you last time, um, which is using the transpose master to edit everything at once and keep all the subtools separate, but uh, it just makes it a little bit harder. All right, I think I'm gonna. I want to show you another technique that is pretty cool, um, just to add some interesting set of details and cavities uh, on, on the skull of this guy. Uh, let's have a look. What do you recommend studying learning ZBrush and core you think is comprehensive? Have trouble getting comfortable with it. Um, I do have a few things. If you go to the ZBrush Guides website, I'll show you that very quickly. Let's see. So if you go to the Seabridge Guides website, um, by the way, this is the course that I just sort of like release earlier on today. Today, so if you're in the in the list, you should have got a, an email about it. Um, but if you go to the Seabridge Guides Guides website, at the top, you have the first sort of item in the menu. Start here, and that will take you to kind of like uh, a little like a little journey of like how to um, get comfortable with Seabridge. I, I share my my process as well, my um, my experience, how I started. Um, I actually released just um, maybe a couple of weeks ago a full-on tutorial, on a, a bit kind of like a walkthrough of uh, how to create a, a face on Seabridge Core Mini, the free version, the small, ver small and free version of Seabridge. Uh, so yeah, you just go down here at the bottom. Yeah, I'll, I'll recommend just starting here, read through all, through all of that. Um, I sort of like create a, a system to, to go step by step. Um, but if you want to skip a few things, you can you can go to this one, right? So Seabridge Core Mini. So if you go to this tutorial, it is a video tutorial that um, sort of explains some of the basics of that um, free software, like the free version of Seabridge. It's super simple, super easy to pick up. And then you can translate what you learn in the in terms of UI uh, navigation that sort of thing into the, the full-on version of Seabridge. But uh, those concepts translate really nicely. Like you will feel super comfortable. It's just that you will have a lot more uh, tools to work with. So um, yeah, so it's just a video, and this is the type of thing that I show how to do. So you start from a sphere, go all the way to um, something like that. And that's done with Seabridge Core Mini, right? And I explained a few concepts in there that, again, you can translate really nicely. Uh, but yeah, that's, um, if you want a more in-depth sort of like course about it, then you can move on to Seabridge Core. So in, in a kind of like a series of steps, you start with Seabridge, you can even start with Sculptures Pro or SculptGL. Um, you start with Seabridge Core Mini, which is the free version of Seabridge that is super simple, easy to pick up. Then when you feel more comfortable, maybe you can sort of upgrade to Seabridge Core Mini and, uh, sorry, Seabridge Core, not Seabridge Core Mini. That's kind of like the in-between. And that's, um, that one allows you to do a lot more things, uh, 3D printing stuff, um, you know, and these two courses that I have here are just about Seabridge Core. Uh, this one is a free series. This one is a paid course in lynda.com but I'll show you this one just to give you an idea. Uh, again, I go through certain things that um, can be translated really easily and very nicely into the full version of Seabrush. So once you feel more comfortable um, with those tools, then you move into Seabrush and it should be a pretty um, a pretty smooth transition. Um, and these ones are a couple of uh, videos that are more conceptual in a way. They're, they're not like tutorial, like step-by-step -step, uh, sort of thing, which is what you find in the Serious live sessions and the tutorials. Uh, what are we like? What we're doing right now, right? I'm showing you like kind of like a systematic approach of sculpting and designing and that sort of thing. Uh, these ones are a bit more conceptual. It just shows the kind of like my my process, how I learned Seabrush and 
what I think could be useful for someone new studying Zebra. So anyway, um, you can start there. <laughs> this is the this is the full on series uh, of Zebra Core. Um, so I think it's like 12 videos or something like that. 10, 10 or 12 videos. Yeah, 12 videos um, to create this. So like creature, uh, the render, I think it's in uh, Marmoset, but this is a render uh, doing C uh, using Zero Core uh, with Polypaint and everything. So, um, and also this one, if you go to this series, if you go down to the bottom, you have this link to uh, 3D Lingo. So this is a, a cool place. Again, if you're relatively new to 3D, all of this is sort of step-by-step uh, step in that starting here section, but you can go here and it just, a, you know, it has a bunch of terms and terminology that might be, uh, you might be new to it. I don't know if it's just zeros that you're new to or 3D in general, but you know, I talk about normals, symmetry, uh, normal maps, any of that. So anyway, I leave it there. And if you guys want, we can talk about the zeros for illustrators course later on. All right, let's see. Um, turning out, oh, tuning, tuning in now. Uh, what's this brush called? Uh, this is just the the curve tube brush. Um, we just did some tweaking, some customization. You can, you know, rewind, I guess, in and see how we did it. Just tweaking the the size and the the picker and 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 all that. But that's pretty much what it is. Cool. Alrighty. So um. I think I think I'm happy with this. Maybe I think the jaw needs a bit of work as well. Um, so let's just do a few things here. Actually, don't mind this uh, the thickness of this one. Maybe it's too much. All this is going to potentially look, look much better when when we dynamish things and start working on the refinement, really. Just want to make this area a little bit more pointy, just to, to refine the silhouette, the overall silhouette a bit more. So if I turn on my thumbnail, the one that I have here, um, that's a, you know, just a quick and easy way to judge the silhouette. That's why I keep it like kind of like white um, over transparent because if you sort of like flip like by default is going to be a black background with white. I just flip that so that the uh, anything that's black uh, series will interpret as transparent. So I can sort of like go closer and you'll see it just sort of like sits behind that thumbnail. I would prefer to I would prefer to have that thumbnail as a darker color or black color, but since Zebrish interprets, interprets black as transparent, it would be, um, you know, it's kind of like hard to to get it there, right? But yeah, what was I doing? We were working on the, on the jaw. Okay. Just want to add a few more pieces here for volume. All righty. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I just remember what I was going to show you. So I'm going to clear that. Um, this, this other way that we can create some pretty interesting stuff. 
um, which let's just let's just clone this one, All right? So it's just a clone of the curve brush, but I'm gonna change the picker to one C again. I'm gonna go to the curve, uh, sorry, to the stroke palette. Um, I might just get rid of the size, so I don't have that so like um, tapering effect anymore. And I'm gonna change these to um, as line, right? So now with this switch enabled, I can just click and drag, and it's gonna be a perfect straight line. So this one is not necessarily something I would use for a, an organic model like this, but it allows us to um, play with some some interesting shapes, and I'll show you why. Um, so let's say from here to here, maybe? Yeah, something like that. I can just now take, once I set it up, um, you know, the first point, I can take the end point and I can move it like so. I'm gonna turn off bend, oh, come on. Sorry, snap. Oh, okay, one second. I need to update it first. Click on it and hold shift to smooth. Now I can just sort of push this in. Right? And we can create that sort of breach and, and create like a like a hole there, which is something that I was sort of missing in the in the silhouette. Um, what's cool about this this technique is that once we have the the initial line there or the initial tube there we can obviously you know change the thickness by changing the the brush size and because we have the lock start and locked end those points are not going to move unless we actually manually move them but i can take the the liquid for example and the liquid is going to allow the uh, the curve to extend as you pull it so you can go like this click and do this so it's actually adding more points to the curve right but the starting point and the um, end point are remaining the same place so I'm just going to use that to add a few more points here and just sort of adding that curvature right click to accept actually I'm can, I can show you something else that's pretty cool <laughs> uh, before you accept that so you can still edit this curve um, let's say that you're happy with the placement of the curve itself right but you wanna kinda like duplicate this and use the same curve to generate more more meshes or more tubes in a way uh, what you can do is click on this snapshot which um, I don't know if it's the default one, but I have it mapped to the uh, number five. But if you click on a snapshot, click once, that basically leaves that curve, uh, leaves that um, mesh that you created with that curve in there, but it also leaves the curve. So in other words, it's kind of like clicking outside in the model to accept that place, that placement of the mesh, but also keeping the original curve. So now that I clicked on a snapshot, um, I'm gonna have this tube but I also have the brush that I can sort of move like so, and you see it's just a duplicate of the of the original one. So it's a it's a easy, interesting way to generate some um, yeah, some cool some cool shapes. I'm gonna turn off liquid now and use this smooth brush to smooth that curvature. Right, um, I think that's working fine. Maybe it's too much. But I can do the same thing again, so a snapshot, and I still have the same curve. Uh, I'm gonna move that like so. Perhaps we can actually move the the starting point, if I can grab it. Sometimes it's hard. All right.
right? So this is kind of like adding a mesh there that is going to help to to create that sort of side of the of the eye, <laughs> but um, but it's going to have some holes, which I think is cool, and it sort of goes with the uh, with the whole idea of this creature skull. All right, so now. I can go ahead and move, use the move brush, move topological brush, and refine that sort of flow of these shapes. How are we doing with time? We have half an hour, so it's still pretty good. And the thing is, I know it's it might be hard to visualize this, but I'm not. I'm not thinking about this as tubes. They're not going to end up looking like that. It's just going to be um, the the main shapes, or the primary shapes for what we're going to do next, uh, which is merging everything together um, and then adding details after. So I'm not necessarily, again, I know it might be a little bit too abstract, especially if you, because you're not doing it yourself, um, to sort of like tap into what I'm trying to create here. But um, in a way, let me just smooth this just a bit. I want to create a bit more of a hole in here. And refine that one. I'm actually going to use the inflate brush here. And here. Uh, so what I was saying is, I'm not. Um, I'm trying not to think about this in terms of detail. Think about this in terms of details or, uh, or just tubes, uh, but in terms of chunks of volume. So those three lines that I did there, um, they're gonna create some interesting holes and, you know, shapes. But I'm thinking about it as a whole piece, right? With some details there, um, but this is gonna be. I'm trying to read it as a as a silhouette or as a volume rather than separate pieces. Um, the same thing, for example, with this area right here. It's not going to look like that. Uh, I'm going to take then clay brush or something like this and I'm going to smudge these pieces here or uh, integrate them towards the cranium. Same thing with this area, right? Uh, so I'm, I'm, again, I'm just thinking about the, the bigger volumes. This piece right here, it has a you know, a bunch of tubes, but it should be like ultimately a single piece, right? And, and it will be even even part of this one, but I'm just trying to, to explain that idea of um, these are not tubes for details. They're just, you know, starting points for the, for the volumes. Okay. I think, I think we are close. Um, I was just thinking maybe we can use the same idea, the same technique for the for this area. So I, I feel like the the hollow area of the ice is a it's a bit weird. So I'm gonna round it a little bit by just doing this. So that's the straight line there. Maybe push it this in. Turn off liquid. Yeah, so I think that's gonna read a little bit better from the front, especially. It's always sometimes it's really hard to get the the point. So I'm just gonna try to use this to make this a bit rounded from the from the front at least. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, we can use the move brush, fine tune it a bit more.
All right. I think it might be interesting to add some kind of like um, that has a name. Forgot the name. Like a, I think it's called like sclerotoid or scler sclerot something uh, bone, which is some some very thin bone area in some fish um, that actually hold like in in I think in fish mostly when they they don't have a, a rounded eye they have a they have this very thin piece of bone that actually holds or, or gives structure to the to the eye um, I'll try to find it but that's something that might be interesting to to add to this all right I'm just gonna add a view a, a couple more here So the idea again with this volume is to make the this part of the eye feel a bit more rounded. I think that's fine. Let's use the move brush. Let's do a quick save. I haven't done one of those. Uh, it's been surprisingly surprisingly good. I think the latest update I did sort of fix some of the, the issues. And another cool thing about this process and using the, the sort of tubes to, to add volume like this is that it just um, helps you create those really interesting sort of like hollow areas that I think are pretty cool. I'm gonna do a snapshot and move this one a bit. Snapshot and move it a bit. All right, and then I can take my move topological and tweak these pieces. And again, trying to think about this as a as a volume. So all of these lines, they're actually represent a single volume rather than you know <laughs> details I know I've been saying that quite a bit but it's important to I think it's it's kind of like the the most important part to to realize about this process that is not it's not adding details it's coming up with volumes that will potentially suggest where to place those lines and those details but at the moment they're just there's just volumes. And I'm gonna inflate that, give it a bit more oomph. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's it's fine. I'm gonna go into solo mode and see if I need to adjust some shapes, especially at the back, because I I might be destroying certain things that um you know it it will be become very very thin in certain areas. So sometimes it's good to check the back. All right, so now it feels a bit more, it feels a bit better. I think if I change to a material that sort of like shows less contrast, hmm, it's gonna be hard for this. But yeah, I think it's fine. Let's do another quick save. Um, let's see if you guys have any questions so far. Uh, Comics Legend, is your is your extra mile course available? Is the comic illustration course included in that too? Um, no, they're they're separate things. Um, the extra mile course is closed. The uh, series for illustrators is uh, is a separate thing, completely different. Uh, teaches I. I I teach a different workflow. It's uh, nothing to do with the with the extra mile. Um, hey Javier, how's it going? Another extra miler here. Glad you like the trick of the curve. 
Um, but yeah, I think we are ready to, we have about 20 minutes, so I'm just going to move on and, you know, dynamish stuff and, and show you how, now that I have a bunch of sub tools, because I do have quite a few, right? How to integrate them all uh, with dynamish. We probably have to crank the resolution up um, so that we can keep a lot of these interesting crevices and pieces. Um, but other than that, I think we are ready to move on. Um, so as always, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call it OR because I do like to have these pieces separate in case I want to you know, go back or actually reuse some of those. I can just duplicate them. So I'm just placing all of them into the folder. All right, so we have the original folder. I'm going to duplicate this, the entire folder. All right, and this one, we can rename it uh, working or whip. And in here we have, let's turn this one off. In here we have all the pieces and we can start um, so sort of like merging them together. So the easiest way I think right now will be to organize them, um, you know, I mean, there, there are two ways actually we could have done that. Um, in this case that we have a lot of sub tools. Um, yeah, let me show you that way. Uh, it's basically, we're gonna end up with another folder or another set of pieces, but it doesn't matter. So uh, what I'll do is I'm going to select the tubes and I'm going to split the ones that are not part of the of the jaw or just the ones that are part of the jaw. So for that, I'm going to use the select rectangular and all of these ones have different polygroups, so it's fine. So I'm going to click on those that I want to remove or split. Right? Let's just double check. Yeah, the other ones are part of the top part. Right? And I'm going to split hidden. All right? And when, what I'm going to do now is select those. I'm going to hide them. Select the jaw. Hide those. Select any piece that is part of the jaw and just hide it. Just holding Alt and selecting. That's all. So now I have the top separated from the bottom. Uh, I'm also probably going to separate the teeth, so I'm going to turn that off as well. So this is going to be a single piece, right? So what I can do now is go to the uh, merge palette here at the bottom and click on merge visible. So now when I merge visible, Siri is going to create this piece that has you know, all the pieces, and obviously it's just a simple merge. So if I hide, let's say half of it, you know, and go to double, you still see, you know, intersecting geometry like that. So that's why we have to dynamish afterwards. Or we don't have to use dynamish. We can use um, remesh by union, and it will be actually like a cheaper <laughs> set of polygons. Anyway, let's go back to this one. So now what I can do is take everything that is hidden. There are different ways to deal with this. I'm just, you know, sort of like winging it. Um, right, and I'm going to take this one and create a new folder. Ah, we don't have to actually. Mm. I'm going to create a new folder, just a temporary one. And I'm just going to put in there everything that is not part of the head. That would be another way to do it. I'm just like showing like three different ways at the same time. Um, so now I'm going to take all of these pieces except the teeth. And in fact, let's just create another folder. It's called this teeth. And just leave the teeth in there. And let's rename that one. Let's call it jaw. Um, let's hide the teeth and I'm just going to do the same thing. Uh, actually, you can do it. <laughs> I'm showing you like too many things. 
but basically you can do the um, merge visible like I just showed you and it creates a separate subtool. If you want to keep everything within the same, um, you can split everything in folders like I just did. Um, so I have the I have the top part folder, I have the jaw and I have the teeth and I can just click on the cog icon and I can merge merge folder so that merges the folder hides it and it creates the mesh within the tool so it's the same process but just probably easier merge folder and merge folder right so all of these ones have the original pieces it's kind of like the same original folder but you know subdivided or split it not subdivided like in sections and now we have three only three meshes that we can deal with all right so if I select the top part, uh, let's go ahead and just dynamesh see what happens. I see this. Um, you know, it gives you an idea of what we're going to go for. So this is a pretty low res. Uh, we can definitely work with this and maybe just smooth everything, right? And we can start uh, sculpting. But you know, we're gonna we're gonna use some of these pieces, uh, or these details a bit more. So. Um, we can increase the resolution quite a bit just to try to keep all those details might be too high so we had 1.3 million polygons that's yeah that's too much let's go slowly so 480 that roughly gives us the same amount of polygons so that's pretty much what we need um, and of course we can use the smooth stronger or the, the smooth strong to sort of smooth these areas now so this is what I meant that um, we need to think about this as volumes rather than details so we start smoothing this to remove some of that faceted polygon but also to integrate those pieces um, another one that we can use is the smooth smooth peaks and that would uh, would respect those crevices a lot more so we're gonna remove that faceted set of polygons but it's gonna respect that those lines a lot more so this is a probably the, the best smooth brush for any sort of like bone or porosity surface So you see, I'm I'm sort of smoothing. Oh, I just realized I'm not working with symmetry. So I'm gonna flip or mirror everything, and then mirror and weld. It's a dynamic, so it doesn't matter. Activate symmetry and and work on this again. So you'll see like slowly this has started to feel a bit more integrated although there's a lot of work a lot of work to do um, to make sure that this feels or reads as a as a single piece but um, for example these pieces here that or these areas that were actually two pieces it sort of like gives me this point where I can just uh, explore some some cracks for example um, some more evident larger details that that was the original idea other pieces like this they need a lot more work so we need to sort of integrate them a bit better uh, but that's something that I'm going to do with the clay brushes when we get to it probably next time it depends if you guys think this is a, a bit boring to watch I'm gonna just do it after and just show you the the end result um, but another thing that I would do at this point is double check areas that you know might be problematic so for example this is alright but this this one right here I can use the inflate brush and make sure it has enough volume so I don't want to have any any holes uh, that are too small so 
certain areas that need more volume. I will do it at this point. And let's do it Dynamesh. Okay. Uh, we have about 10 minutes. I'm just gonna show you the what what the process would be to integrate this a bit more. So with the clay brush or the clay builder brush, uh, I'm actually gonna use the custom my custom clay brush. Um, let's say this area right here, it feels very rounded, right? So I will just go with this brush and do these sort of things. So it's just sculpting. That's that's part of the process, right? So it's just the doing this little by little, adding volume, refining that transition. But yeah, that's, I'll probably do this um, off camera, but just wanted to show you what, what the process would be. So we have those lines that serve as a, as a starting point for the, for the primary shapes, but then we'll refine them. Uh, what's another place? Like for example, this one. This one would be a good example of a, an area that needs refinement. This is pretty clear that it's a tube. So I want to integrate it with this other piece. Just adding clay pieces. It's literally like if you had, uh, if you worked before with uh, traditional clay, right? It's just adding pieces first. That's what we did with the tubes, or the uh, curve tube, custom curve tube, and then refining it, just uh, smudging it, and that sort of thing. So that you know changes quite a bit. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's a lot of things that need to be done. For example, here. And again, while I do this, I also try to think about um, that, that that balance between the, the details and the sort of like areas of rest that I mentioned early, earlier today. All right, uh, but that's the idea, right? Slowly getting to that. I'm going to do the same thing for this. So this one has about 296 polygons, so I reckon uh, 300 in resolution for Dynamesh at this size is maybe not too much. 432, mm, a bit more, 500. Yeah, so that's almost double. Same deal, using the smooth picks just to try to maintain those lines uh, first. Just try to get rid of that sort of like faceted polygons from the tube brush. You can actually create a custom tube brush that has a lot more resolution, but oh, forgot to do the same thing. So mirror, mirror and weld, symmetry. Okay. Um, yeah, same principle applies to this clay builder brush, let's say here. This step, the next step is pretty boring to watch, but it's, um, it's all about integrating those lines that we build with the, with the tubes. Um, I think this area needs to be simplified a lot more. So this would need require a bit of a, a bit more of sculpting. All right, let's do the um, the other one for the teeth. So the teeth, um, the thing with these ones is that they're all different pieces, right? Um, so if I dynamesh, some of them are very close to each other. So we're gonna lose the ability to edit them individually in, in a way. And because they're very simple shapes, I reckon it's just gonna be easier if I do a um, zero mesh straight away. So let's just do that and we'll wrap it up there. 
um, geometry, zero measure. I'm gonna use. Let's just use the same adapt uh, symmetry and zero measure. Right. So yeah, I think that works. That's perfect for what we need. Really, uh, we can split this into auto groups if we want to use them individually or hide certain pieces mirror and weld so that we have different uh, sorry the same polygroups uh, but that's it um, let's go here turn this off uh, if, wanna, if we want something a bit smoother for the for the teeth uh, instead of subdividing we can just turn on dynamic and this is gonna be a pretty smooth piece anyway um, but we are pretty close to you know starting the detailing process. Like I said, the, the rest is all about refinement. I just want to show you the difference between, let's say, this, this skull that I, I didn't even spend, I, I think was two minutes just uh, integrating things, but let's do Shift S and I'm going to switch to this one. Uh, actually, let's just hide the one right um, so if you have a look at the placement of the things that we did and the ones that are a little bit more integrated so these oops the, these areas you know they feel more like one piece than what we just did um, yeah sort of here and here right that is the the whole point of the next stage um, this one and this one and that's what I was saying like think about those if you were doing something similar think about those lines and these tubes as you know adding or in, yeah adding pieces of clay and that's it alrighty so let's go back to this to the one that we need um, but yeah I think I'm gonna leave it here for because they like I said the rest is just about the sculpting process so we can tackle that next um, next session all right let me know guys if you have any questions here in the chat uh, how do you get that pen tool and color silhouette on top of the right okay that's the it's called epic pen <laughs> every every stream I, I should have like a little <laughs> like a, um, a disclaimer at the beginning so um, epic pen you can download it it's a free app to take notes um, Heiko van der Scherm, sorry, I don't think I pronounced that correctly. Um, hi, Paul, I just bought the series for Illustrator course on your website. Awesome. I used to create illustration board game creating. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that brings me to my last point. Um, just in case you guys don't know and want to have a look at it. Um, this one. So this is what um, Heiko, Heiko, sorry, don't know how to pronounce it. Heiko, it's um, talking about. This is the series for illustrators intensive course. It is uh, based on a a live workshop that I did a few weeks ago, and it went really well. Um, the the students created some really cool, really cool, awesome work. Um, and because I recorded it for them, um, I actually spent a few more weeks uh, putting it together, like organizing it as a as a course. And now I'm making it available as an on-demand sort of like self-paced course uh, because the results were really good. Um, so in the course, I actually create as a demo the image that you see here, the harvesters, which I'm going to give you a link to it. Uh, so with the course, you'll get um, the layered, you know, high-res layered version of the harvester image, which is this one right here. You get um, all the videos, and, and I didn't edit anything out from the workshop. So you get 100% everything that we talked about, and even like me during the session answering questions to the to the students that were in the live session. So it's a, a pretty, you know, you will get almost the same experience. It's just you don't have that interactive um, sort of like live feedback in a way. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is the course. It's um, it's a structure in a kind of like a systematic approach in a very similar way 
a bit more structure and a bit more in depth than what I do on these live sessions. But it's in the same way so that you can, uh, it, it's not, not about creating that specific illustration that I just showed you, this one. It's, it's about the workflows and, and, the, uh, and how to approach a project so you can apply those uh, features and those tools and everything else, the, the workflow itself, to create your own um, illustrations and your own, um, you know, your own art. That's why um, if you, like if you have a look at the, some of the, the students, I'm just gonna show you some of the artwork that they were produced in the in the course. So for example, Mattia uh, did this really cool one that has a, f a few options. So this is a line work created in inside ZBrush. So this is all 3D and rendered yeah, using the techniques I, I show in the course. So it's really, really good. Um, this is another one from Jesse. Again, super cool idea. Uh, you know, it's, it feels like a comic page, really. So uh, I really encourage you to at least check it out, uh, check this um, this process. And he shared a lot of the, you know, the behind the scenes. Uh, this is a, an asset that we were creating during that um, workshop as well. So it's really good. Um, Here's another another one. He even went ahead and, and did like a mock-up of how the, the comic might look like. So it's just applying the same techniques, uh, different styles, obviously, different ideas. This is the original sketch. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just leave it there, guys, in case you're, you you wanna check it out. These are some of the, the artwork that I've done in the past um, following the same techniques, really. So I, I apply the same techniques for all of these ones and that's kind of like the workflow that I teach because you know it has given me good results so I just want to to share it uh, so it's there uh, a few Q&A's here if you want something uh, to answer something specific uh, you can send me an email and I'm happy to uh, to answer them but it's there so it's it's open uh, it is different than the extra mile uh, this, this is a self-paced very uh, intense course uh, because it's taken from a five-day workshop but it is there if you guys want it and if you're uh, subscribed to the newsletter you can also uh, oh no <laughs> I just realized I think I forgot to mention something in the email so if you're in, in subscribing to the, the email list you might get another one uh, later today uh, because there is a free version a, a, com a comic style guide I forgot to mention that so if you don't want to you know get the course which is a lot more in-depth uh, there's a free PDF guide that I created for the compositing side of things that uh, you know might help some of you guys. Um, Heiko, when I create an illustration with this course on Twitter, is there a hashtag uh, that I can use? Yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, you will get an email soon um, about that, and also with the just keep an eye on your email. Um, you will also get the 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 instructions of how to access the uh, the discord server because we have a discord server where we can share stuff and you guys can you know uh, give feedback to each other and that sort of thing and i'm also in there um so the all of that is covered in the next email all right guys so hopefully you found uh today's today's session uh interesting i'm gonna do a quick turntable and Turntable. All right, I'm just gonna leave it there, doing a, a quick turntable of this call. Yep. So hopefully you find it interesting, and I will, I will leave it here. And next time uh, we'll continue with the, you know, adding details and making it look more sinister and, and interesting. This um, this call. Um, Comics legend creature pack. Um, did I miss something? Open your creature pack. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, that creature pack is it was just a, a one of thing and it's just a collaboration. So again, uh, I might do one by myself so that I can, you know, have the the rights to open it whenever I want to. But that one in particular was just for a. Um, yeah, it was it was something else. So I will I will try to think about what to do next for the, for the for the next pack. But as it is right now, um, it's not available. All right, cool. All right, guys, so I'm gonna post this uh, later on on Instagram or something so you can have a look at the 
at the at the turntable and some renders. But yeah, cool. I'll leave it here, guys. And again, if you're interested in the illustrators or series for illustrators course, or you have questions about it, just feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I'll I'll be here <laughs> all day, working and, and replying to emails. All right.